Hello, and welcome to the Financial Future Guide. I'm your guy, and I'm your guide. My name is Alex, and today we're looking at the Canadian economic news that has come out in the last couple of months. We'll be covering everything from the Canadian dollar, the unemployment rate, and then we'll get into recent news from Canadian companies such as Cineplex, Bell, Telus, RioCan, Air Canada, and more. If at any time you're enjoying the content, remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell notification. With that out of the way, let's begin. I'm only going to spend a quick moment on this because I know we're all sick of it. However, it does relate to the overall economy. But over the last few weeks, we've seen some really positive things happening where new cases actually peaked mid-January and since then are down quite substantially. Hopefully this downward trend continues and we can get out of this shortly. Although the new cases have pulled back quite a bit in the last few weeks, there was still that fairly large spike in January. And this resulted in lockdowns that led to 213 jobs being lost. These lost jobs obviously affected the unemployment rate, which rose 0.6% to 9.4. This is the highest we've seen since August 2020. And as I mentioned in the previous video, with lockdowns coming into place, we're obviously going to experience difficulties in the job market. And that in turn is going to cause the unemployment rate to rise. With the pullback in cases and talks of lifting the lockdowns, I think we should expect to see the unemployment rate continue its downward trend shortly. Statistics Canada estimates that Canada's economy shrank by about 5% last year. They go on to say that the country's gross domestic product grew seven months in a row after steep drops in March and April, but despite that streak, the numbers mean the economy was still 3% smaller in November than it was last February. Their preliminary estimate shows the economy contracted by 5.1%, and by comparison, the preliminary US data suggests their economy shrank by 3.5%. In brighter news, retail sales continue to rebound, having risen seven months in a row since April's lows. Taking a look at the chart, we can see that retail sales have actually fully recovered from the pandemic, and they've actually had quite significant growth over the last few months. This is definitely a positive sign that the economy is on the right track. And over the last year, many people have had less things to spend money on. So I can imagine retail sales will continue to grow as lockdown measures are lifted and we head into the nice weather of spring and summer. To get a good snapshot of the overall Canadian market, we'll take a look at the S&P slash TSX composite index, as this represents roughly 70% of the total market cap of the Toronto Stock Exchange. There are about 250 companies included within this index, so it gives us a fairly good idea of the overall Canadian market. Since the March lows, we've seen a nice gradual recovery over the last few months. We're now actually breaking all-time highs, up over 2.5% from the February highs we saw prior to the crash. The Canadian to US exchange rate has been fairly steady over the last month, sitting anywhere between 78 cents and 79 cents. If we take a look at the five-year chart, we really haven't been at these levels since February 2018. But for those of us in Canada who do choose to invest in the US markets, this is definitely a huge upside as we're getting more bang for our buck. Moving into company news, first we'll start with GameStop. That was just a joke. I have absolutely no interest in talking about GameStop. Go ahead and leave a like and comment for the only YouTuber that chose not to address this situation. All right, now back to investing. Now, the first company that I actually want to report some news for is Cineplex. The reason that I bring them up is they're number seven on the top 100 on Wealth Simple Trade. So I figured I may as well address the company and their earnings. Now, the stock is down around about 66% from their February highs. So I can see why a lot of investors are looking to play this as a recovery play. However, if I take us over to the five-year chart, this company has been on quite a steady downward trend in the last five years. This is obviously not a very positive sign to see. And with the rise of streaming services, I do believe there are some challenging roads ahead for cinemas. Now, before you go and comment that I don't know anything, check out Mulan, check out Wonder Woman. I'm not saying cinemas are done for. I'm just saying the environment may look a little bit different in the next decade. Now today, Cineplex reported their fourth quarter and year-end results. So I want to highlight a few points on Wealthsimple's sixth most popular company. Total revenues, 55.5 million, down from 443.2 million, which is an 88.2% decline from the previous year. Theater attendance was 0.8 million, down from 16.8 million, which is a decrease of 95.3%. And net income was negative 230.4 million versus the 3.5 million they earned the previous year. So anyway, much like the rest of us, 2020 was not Cineplex's year. And I think we've spent enough time on this one, so let's move on. Bell Media cuts radio jobs. 
Bell's Director of Communications, Mark Choma, said that as the media industry evolves, we're focused on investment in new content and technology opportunities while also ensuring our company is as agile, efficient, and as easy to work with as possible. The Bell Media sector of the company includes CTV television network, specialty TV channels, radio stations, and production studios. As Mark Choma touched on, the media industry is evolving quite rapidly, and I think it's tough for large telecommunications companies to keep up with the current industry. On my recent analysis video of TELUS, I did touch on the media industry as a whole from a telecommunications perspective in which others like Rogers and Shaw have struggled in this space. So it does not surprise me that Bell is also facing similar challenges. And on the subject of TELUS, they have formed a strategic alliance with Google Cloud to bring digital transformation to key industries, including communications, technology, healthcare, and agriculture. This 10-year agreement will introduce new solutions and improved customer experiences, while also driving new efficiencies for TELUS through its commitment to public cloud. The partnership is focused on three main initiatives, reimagining the future through co-innovation, One of the areas of focus will be on redefining the way healthcare and agriculture solutions are delivered, providing consumers with fresher and healthier food by improving traceability, and enabling business customers to streamline their IT and network operations. They're also looking at smart home technology, bringing state-of-the-art connectivity, control, and convenience to more families and businesses. Their next initiative is accelerating TELUS' digital transformation. TELUS' public cloud will adopt the Google Cloud Enterprise platform to drive greater operational efficiencies of its core IT and network infrastructure. Google Cloud will also become one of TELUS' partners in the delivery of 5G services. And they will use the Google Cloud Contact Center AI to reinvent the customer experience, improving customer interactions, and realizing significant savings. Finally, they'll be embracing sustainability and social responsibility. And this is really just about giving back to the community. On the topic of TELUS, the division TELUS International had their IPO in the first week of February, making it the largest ever tech IPO for the TSX. TELUS International describes itself as a customer experience company and has 600 clients, including Google, Uber, TikTok, PayPal, and Zara. Despite the spinoff, TELUS Corporation still owns about 67% of the voting power in TELUS International. Now, despite not being my favorite retail REIT, I know that a lot of Canadian investors do like RioCan, and they have seen resilience from tenants even as Q4 net income falls by 50%. Now, although the net income comment in that headline may sound alarming, As we know, REITs are focused on funds from operation, or in other words, the monthly rent that they collect from their tenants. RioCan said that only a quarter of their tenants were closed at the end of 2020, and it classifies almost 80% of them as strong or stable, because 98% of total gross rent has been collected in cash. Now, funds from operation reached 124.1 million, which is a fall from 146.1 million in 2019. Now, Jonathan Gitlin, the chief operating officer, will actually take over the CEO position in April from Ed Sunshine, who is stepping down after 27 years on top. Sunshine says, thank you to everyone for putting up with me for 27 years. He won't reminisce today, or at least not much. You'll have to come to a post-COVID party for that. Now, as much as I appreciate the invite, Mr. Sunshine... I'll be hanging out with my new LinkedIn friend, Mitchell Moneyman Goldhar, the founder and executive chair of Smart Centers. Now, although Mitchell did not confirm that he would be in one of the new upcoming Financial Future Guide videos, he definitely is making an appearance on my LinkedIn connections. Now, here's another company on Wealthsimple's top 100. In fact, they're in the number one spot, and that's Air Canada. They have announced that they're temporarily cutting 1,500 jobs and suspending 17 routes. Now, I do believe that Air Canada is actually releasing their earnings today. However, you won't catch me making any comments about this because last time I outlined my bearish case of Air Canada and the rest of the airlines, I don't think I made any friends with 15 dislikes. This is a financial future guide record for the most hated video on the channel. This headline, Starbucks Canada to close 300 stores by March, is a little bit more of an overreaction than the actual situation. This is really just a part of their transformation strategy in which they're focused on adding new drive through locations, the expansion of delivery, and a pilot of curbside pickup only coffee shops. All right, so that's all for today's video. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe to see videos similar to this one.